the four of you, Melting Snow and the Ice Stalkers, went to Oklahoma to break into the boarding school, and you, all of you came out with, I believe, no injuries, and with about four wagons full of about a hundred kids total. And it's about, I will say it's been about probably a week, a week and a half since then, as you've taken the back roads, um, the winding dirt trails, and have basically been dropping wagons off at the a few different reservations across the state. And the I'd say the initial reception that you got at the first reservation you stopped at was one of s surprise because they were not expecting you. And then they promised that they would s help find these kids their homes and also spread word to other reservations down the trail uh, ahead of you as you make your way back uh, to San Denis. And we'll say that over the the next few days drop down to maybe like two two wagons and I'd say that's probably around when you guys realize that it is it's New Year's. And the year is now eighteen eighty six. Uh, so as I thought it was 1896. Oh, wait, hold on. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> My bad. I I was 10 years off. So it's it's 1896 now. Whew. They still have grunge. It's okay. <laughs> wow. Good to know. <laughs> oh, wrong 90s. Never mind. <laughs> I'll just grunge with a banjo. <laughs> but anyway, um, well, the oh. big thing—the big thing was for them to get the kinfolk back to their friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adrian didn't care about the other, the other ones. If they're just humans, he doesn't care. They're inconsequential mm -hmm. to his success or failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's not really easy to tell whether they're just ordinary humans or kinfolk. Uh, I'd say, like, it's safe to assume it's probably a mix of both, but mm -hmm. you can't really know for sure without shifting into Krynos and scaring the shit out of all of them. No one's going to be doing that because that's a delay and Adrian doesn't want a delay. All right, and then. So, oh, yep. are you saying that they're dry, riding into Saint Denis on well, New Year's? Or, no, no. Um, what I meant was like you guys are on your way back home. Um, you're not there yet, uh, but eventually you reach a point where it's it's New Year's. It's kind of like at the I'd say halfway point. But they would get back to Saint Denis very quickly. Mm -hmm. They drop the kids off at the thing, then they go to the cairn and they just say, "Open the moon bridge," and they're instantly back in Saint Denis. Oh, right. <laughs> they don't have horses. They they stole the carts, sure, but they don't have yeah. their horses. They they had. Okay, yeah, they I'm, were. I'm sorry. I. Yeah, I got my. You forgot about the moon bridge again. <laughs> yeah, I got my. It's okay. My details all jumbled up. Um, but yeah, uh, so we'll say when you drop off the the last wagon, when there's one wagon left, uh, that's around when New Year's comes around, and you can see the the mountain range to the east. Um, 
leading into the state of Amberino, uh, where the reservation is. And so as the, the group of you make your way into the mountains, it's a, probably another day or two as, as you're able to cover your tracks because of uh, Red Cloud and Ice Wind. They use their gifts to kind of call up cold winds and snow to cover your tracks. And going through the mountain pass, you eventually find yourselves in a small, or you find yourselves passing through this small abandoned mining town uh, by the name of of Coulter. And uh, this town, this town was basically buried in this massive storm about 10 years ago. Uh, there's a a stone church where the roof has caved in from the way the snow. Most of the buildings are collapsed, but there is there's a la a large house that is still intact and also a small stable for the horses. Do you guys plan on continuing on, or are you, are you guys going to stop and rest for a while? Is it, is it nighttime? Uh, let me roll a dice and figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it's it's probably early evening. It's getting dark. And their only path is starting to go down the hill. Yes. Shit. Yeah, Adrian tells him to stop there. And he tells the guru, you know... He tells their pack to keep an eye out. He tells his pack to come on. They're gonna go check out the buildings, make sure this place is actually abandoned. They're gonna check out the, uh... Are they coming in from the way of the church? Uh, yeah, coming in from the way of the church. You guys are coming in from the north, kind of going kind of going down the mountain slope and from here it's basically more or less a straight sh shot south um, and the roads through the mountains uh, there's it's further down south from the town but uh, there's a road that basically twists and turns down to strawberry and then there's another road that follows the uh, Dakota River and up to over east to the reservation. So they're going to be taking the second left. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he tells Melting Snow and, and the other pack to stay with the kids. And I'm pretty sure they can all figure out that they're going to stay at the large house, but he gets off the wagon calls Isaac and Laz and Heath over and just tells them, let's just make sure this place is empty before we start unloading kids off the wagon. And as he says that, he, he just kind of walks over to the church as he's talking to him and he just glances inside. He's not, he doesn't expect there to be anything inside. Yeah, inside at a glance, you just see like just a pile of snow where snow is accumulated and melted over the years you see like some of the the timbers of the roof kind of poking out of the pile uh there's a few like broken pews it's nothing interesting doesn't look like they haven't even been here for decades all the better for us if we get stuck on the mountain, those kids are going to freeze to death, so... We'll just clear every... Every building... Every... Every square on this little map that I have here, and... Just make sure nothing's in here. Then we'll stay in the large house. 
Isaac, you and I will put the horses in the stable. Laz, Heath, you guys look for wood to get the fire started inside that large house. And we'll get it. We'll get somebody cooking and cooking a meal or something. We should probably hunt something down in the meat as well. <clears throat> Secure the buildings and make sure we have warmth first. We can eat the trail rations. We don't have to eat fresh every day. Hunting is the last priority since we actually have food with us. First, first priority is shelter, so these kids don't freeze. Sure. And Adrian, even though he's small, he seems like he's very, very practiced at moving through snow. <sighs> it's been a while since it's been freezing cold with this. That was nice. I don't miss it whatsoever. And as... No, I don't miss it. As you walk through the snow, it's about, like, about knee height. Um, and as the ice stalkers and, and melting snow get off the wagon and uh, keep the kids bundled up in, in blankets, um, you see melting snow, like, trying to start a, a snowball fight <laughs> uh, with Red Cloud. And it's just a... Probably like a, f a few minutes of Red Cloud hop, kind of fumbling in his homid form in the snow <laughs> and melting snow winds by a landslide. Uh, and then who is, uh, sorry, who's checking the houses again? Or the buildings? Uh, I believe Adrian's uh, pack. Oh, yeah, so right. everybody is. All right. All the, all the players in the room. <laughs> there you go. All right. I give them the good shit and give the boring shit to the NPCs. It's a, it's a bad habit. I should probably <laughs> have the NPCs check the town so they can get killed. <laughs> but when you fail, you're, you're right if they die. Yeah, but I'd still be alive. <laughs> Back to the driving board, I guess. As long as you're alive, you have a chance to do it again. No, yeah, they just, especially if they're just caved in and if if the large house is actually livable, mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense that anything would be in the caved in houses. Yeah. But they're going to check the caved in houses anyway. Part okay, of the yeah. reason why is because when you make a house like that, that hasn't been moved in decades... The wood that the house is made out of is completely dry and therefore burnable. They have plenty of logs. They can just start collecting firewood now. All right, yeah, and as the the four of you start moving through the chat town, checking each building, um, the large house is mostly intact. Uh, it has a few holes in the roof or uh, maybe like a broken window or two, but it's... It's solid and usable as a shelter. And the other houses are... There's one house that's caved in, and the other houses are smaller, a little bit more cramped, and not as comfortable. Um, anything, anything usable inside those houses that they might need to keep to help keep the kids alive or to cook a meal they're mm -hmm. going to take but they're all just going to basically once the large house is cleared Adrian's going to tell them to get the kids inside tell Laz and Heath to keep on looking for firewood enough for the night and then him and Isaac are going to go down and put the horses in the wagon inside the stable okay yeah it doesn't take much time at all to uh, pick up any usable wood for a fire. The large house actually has a chimney. And soon enough, you have a fire going, and uh, the horses are set up in the stable. And the, the other pack uh, kind of ushers the kids inside, and they start cooking meals for everybody, opening cans, passing around dried rations. 
and by the time camp is set up and made uh it's it's uh it's already dark Uh, once the kids are settled inside the building and everything and everything is all right, Adrian's going to actually sit, unless it's actively snowing, he's going to just drag a chair out and sit outside for a while. Okay. He really doesn't seem very cold out here. And... Isaac, as you're move, moving through this town, um, just on account of you being a silent strider, you, I'd say you, you do feel this place does have a close connection with death. There's no, like, you, you don't, you guys don't find any, like, frozen bodies in the snow, uh, but something terrible definitely happened here probably several years ago and the fact that it's been left untouched uh that connection to that tragedy and the just the death deaths that happened here years ago is still pretty strong <laughs> mm -hmm. um give me one second i'm checking this gift real quick okay because i don't remember the gift um <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> Let's have some fun. So, um, kind of want to play with visions of dust or duat, mm -hmm. actually. Um, at a Nasus point, roll perception of a cult, typical seven. For the rest of the team, the character can see and hear the ghosts and detect haunted er areas with another perception of a cult roll. Okay. Can't communicate, but I can at least see what's around me. You know, mm -hmm. if there's any lingering spirits or anything, lingering dead spirit spirits, or whatnot. All so. right, go ahead and make that roll. I. Ooh, you cut out real bad. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Okay, look. Oh, looks like it's having a little bit of a connection spike, but I, th I think it should be okay. Uh huh. I can't understand. Oh no. Uh -huh. go <laughs> God makes me feel like I'm in a weird, like, plastic hallway that keeps, like, twisting and turning. It's disorienting. Oh, no. Okay, I, I, I think it's better now. Had a little yes. hiccup there. Yeah, as, as I was going to say, I, I don't remember uh, if you just automatically, like, detect ghost-related stuff, but I wanted to give you something to do. Because... <laughs> I haven't. I I feel bad for not really touching on any silent silent strider shenanigans. Ah, okay. Oh yeah, then that's that's all he do then. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make that roll. Micah, come on. Let's see if I got that. Oh, come on. Zero. Oh. Well, on another note, he does have. Uh, well, he can't. Let's see. Where is it? At least he's able to get glimpses into the dark umbra, like um maybe in certain. See, the gift lets him see everything around him that has to deal with ghosts and wreaths and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But ghost sight gives him glimpses into only specific areas where something significant has happened. So like, there could be hundreds of dead people around, but he will only see where somebody was brutally murdered. Oh, okay. Since he failed that, since I failed uh, visions of Duat. Okay. Yeah, with the wrong. yeah with the the glimpses, um, I'd say you you do catch it a few glimpses on of the on the dark umbra where like the there's like the the caved in house. Uh, you you catch a glimpse of a few ghosts just kind of huddled together um just freezing in the cold blue skin snow in their hair and uh 
I'd say like over in the church too, um, where the the roof is collapsed. You see probably like a few more faces in the window. It's kind of just ghosts that have died from hypothermia, and they are just hiding, staying hidden from the dangers that are over in that part of the Umbra. Well, it sucks to be them, that's for sure. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't go and really check on him in anything. You know, the spirits typically want to be left alone. He'd rather stay safe. Mm-hmm. So no dark Umbra delving today. Oh, Just it's... curious as to, you know, what might be around. Yeah. Oh, and if he's sitting, if he's like, if, if anybody, anybody else is around him, his eyes just go like a glaze white. Just glazes right over when he does this. But he'd make sure it'd be only pack or something that are, that's around him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about all you find on the du- in the dark umbra. A few ghosts hiding, huddled in the ruined buildings as this kind of otherworldly snowstorm is blowing on the other side. Right. He just he would just wander around and search around and whatnot mm-hmm. until it gets too cold and he seeks out warmth. And I'd say probably about maybe an hour or two or three into the night, there's a a little bit of snowfall as it starts to drop further into the cold. And that's when everybody comes inside to into the large house to stay warm around the fire. And there's the the wind whistles through the the holes in this large house this cabin as through the uh for anyone that stays awake during the night you do hear the like an occasional scratch at the door and yeah through the night uh for anybody that stays up or on watch or on or just can't sleep uh through the night just at random intervals, there's just a, a soft scratching at the door as if something is pawing at it. Adrian checks the door a couple times. He can't sleep. It's too dry in the winter. So, uh, yeah, first couple times there's scratches. He'll even shift into Krynos and open the door like, what the fuck? See if there's anything there. Yeah, the first few times, nothing seems out of the ordinary it's like it's like nothing was even there you don't see any tracks uh but probably but later on uh closer to morning probably around like three or four i feel let's say like four or five o'clock in the morning just as the the sun is starting to rise uh there is a single stroke of a claw on the door and give me just one moment. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the voice box. Uh, the claw mark looks something like this. Fuck. You know what that is? I think so. Adrian would know. Should we be concerned? That's the question. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. Me... Yeah, Isaac that's... just groans. I yeah. think After the first few scratches, Adrian just shifts into wolf form and lays down right in front of the door. He's blocking the cold air from going underneath anyway, and nothing can get in the door without going past him since he's in the doorway. So if the scratch was way different, he would have re- tried to re-answer the door. Okay, um, I'll rephrase that then. Um, probably after, like, bef- before Adrian stands watch outside the door. Uh, no, no, he's or... inside. Oh, but he's okay. In wolf form, laying against the door. He's not going to stay outside. Oh, okay. Sure as shit, didn't want to run into any goddamn red talons. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so he shifts back into Krinos and he opens the door and he looks at it. He sees that. He shuts the door again real quick, turns around, shifting down into Hamid form, says, All right, everybody, get up. Get up now. <sighs> So what happened this time? Get up. Just get up. I am up. That's... We are in another group's territory, and if we don't get the fuck out right now, we are all probably going to die. Get up. Let's go. I don't know if explain what happened to the town. Small, the, the, small, the, 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 the small disclaimer, what happened to the town is not related to what's going on now. <laughs> I suspect you leave. <laughs> just half heat. Just the only it, the, wagon. the only thing that matters is the fact that with that mark on the door, that could have been what happened to the town. Whether it did or didn't doesn't matter. It could have been. In fact, he will even call Laz and Heath and melting snow over and say, listen, come here, come here, come here, come here. Look at this mark, burn it into your brain. If you ever come across it out in the wilds, out in the middle of nowhere where no human has probably ever gone before, if you see this mark, turn around and walk away. These guru will kill you and eat you and have no fucking problem with it. It might leave you alone if you happen to be in Lupus, but uh, I doubt it. Yeah, melting They're snow. They're friendly to my tribe. Melting snow would be probably the only one that they wouldn't kill. But I'm not saying they wouldn't maim her first for walking into their territory. If this is their territory, I'm sorry I stayed here tonight and let's go. These guys are going to kill us if they catch us. Wonderful. And they're on our side. I would not expect any less. So oh, yeah, with that, there's no breakfast. There's no warming up yourself by the fire before we leave. It is pack and while all the kids are getting up and getting their shit ready, Isaac, you know, the whole pack. I'm not. I'm, Adrian's not getting out of the house without the whole pack. The whole the whole group are getting the horses. Hopefully, they're still alive, and and the wagons. Well, let's go check it out then. <clears throat> By the way, should we change into more our bigger forms if we're nope. No. Okay. No nope. taking the size of threat. Yep. Just so you know, little information, what we call what what is called the Krinos form, if you were to have a rough translation of what Krinos actually means in English, it would be war. That is our war form. So if we shift into our war form and walk around, they'll they'll think that we're posturing and they will come to attack us to see who's better, them or us. Yeah, there's no sweet sweet words that I can say to get us out of this. These guys will not listen. Well, let's go check the head to stay we'll see the hoser alive. And if yep. not, then we're running. We're grabbing kids and we're gonna walk out of here. How many kids are there, by the way? I just didn't count. Uh, I want to say this. Probably about. Uh, I want to say fifteen left, if I remember my notes right. And that's like the last wagon. <sighs> And I'm assuming that they, we can't shove them into the uh, to the Umbra to get uh, home faster. 
No. Uh. But just remember, the red talons are Guru. They go there just as easily as we do. There is no running away from these guys. They are us. Basically, if we're respectful enough and they're not hungry enough, we'll be okay. You know, he's saying this as he's traipsing through the snow directly for the stable. All right. Keith, yeah. Keith looks back at the door and says, I somehow doubt we're going to get out of this unscathed now. And I almost made rank three. Yeah, as, as the other pack starts to mobilize, uh, Icewind and Red Cloud both especially look uneasy since this kind of climate is supposed to be their environment, but they they didn't really sense anything off or wrong. Um, but as the other pack and Melting Snow start loading the kids up into the wagon, uh, you find the horses safe, but thoroughly spooked and upset as they they are very agitated and as everyone starts to pack up uh you start to notice more of those claw marks just kind of scattered through the town on basically any any wooden surface uh that has room for those claw marks and even the the wagon along the wooden side has one such claw mark Now that he's noticing the claw marks, he's going to look at them. Are they all fresh? Or are they old ones? Uh, I'd say fresh as in they were made within the last few hours. You, They were not there when you guys rolled into town. Okay. Once the horses are hooked up and the kids are in, he tells everybody to start going. All right, and he tells everybody to start going. What he's going to do, he's going to grab a piece of wood, shift into crinos, and actually slam it into the ground. Then he's going to use his claws. He's going to put He's going to put owl, then he's going to put shadow lord, then he's going to put blood moon's vengeance down down underneath it just to just to, just to mark who his pack is. And he's going to smack the top of that, and then he's going to shift back into Hamid, turn around and start following the wagon. Not quite sure if it'll scare the red talons off, but to actually know that they're trying to actively hunt a pack might, might turn them away. Okay. Especially if they know that the pack is protected by Owl. Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's the fanciest best thing he can do right now so all right and that that seems to work as down the rest of the mountain uh through the snow you uh you don't see any more of those claw marks and it seems it, it seems like you're in the clear, and just as uh, the wagon is leaving the mountains and you start seeing like the, the snow start to fade away, uh, that's when you see, see a, group of, a, a group of about maybe three wolves on like a, a distant cliffside just watching as you leave. Uh, but they don't follow. They were nice enough to say goodbye to us. Right. When he sees them, he's caught up to the to the wagon by now. He's oh, probably yeah. in in the back of it since yeah they don't have a lot of riding horses, so most of them are just riding in it anyway. And since it's filled with kinfolk, he goes ahead and he shifts again into uh, lupus. Mm -hmm. And he just he gives them a howl more like a respectful thing like he, he you know what I mean it's 
the wolves don't talk, so it's more of a tonal thing. Yeah. But it's just it's it's one that's a not not to say that I'm weak and you're strong, but more of a thank you for letting us travel your lands kind of deal. Yeah. And one of them will answer back in a howl just to acknowledge it. And there's, I'd say like the, the tone isn't anything aggressive. It's just kind of like, um, I guess a, a mutual respect. I guess this is the best way that I can, I can put it. It's just acknowledging uh, your howl. He'll take it. It's a lot better than you're about to breathe your last breath, so <laughs> take it. Yeah, after that, he just shifts back into Hamid and tucks himself into the back and says, God damn, we're lucky. And then mildly. Well, it's either that or all the stories I ever heard about the Red Talons are not truthful. I highly doubt that. Well, there's plenty of truth to them. I figured as much. Flesh eating wolves. Human eating wolves. Ugh. And, Goddamn, we're lucky. And the the other Uktena, uh, Stoneheart, uh, he'll say the stories that I have heard our Galliards tell. When, when the other tribes came, when the Wormbringers came, the other tribes would kill our human and lupus kinfolk outright. But it was the, the Red Talons that would just steal them. You were talking about your lupus born, right? Mm -hmm. And Enod's. Yeah, the, the lupus-born kinfolk. Yeah, I myself am not a lupus-born. Neither are neither are Heath and Laz. So, I don't think actually Isaac isn't either. So, yeah, we're not safe. I can't believe that we got out of that. Not that they would know the difference, but the fact that we're all in Hamid, thats all they need. Yeah. But they believe that no respectable lupus born would ever take on Hamid. Or travel with Hamid kin mm -hmm. uh, kinfolk in a wagon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And and Stoneheart will add it as, well, there seem to be only three of them, maybe. Maybe that they... see. Well, yes, that we, that we saw. Maybe they... Maybe they didn't know how many... Garu are among us exactly and want to give a very strongly worded warning. Wouldn't surprise me. Good P. I took the warning. <laughs> this this expedition's being run by a, a Shadow Lord, so we're not afraid to run. Fight when it's advantageous. Could you imagine if if I was a silver fang? Take that as a threat and then go out and have to challenge them because my honor is at stake. Sounds boring. Sounds like a good way to die early. Exactly. <laughs> Death is boring. I, I Well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you no. I, I think you're the expert when it comes to that. Well, I keep my visits very limited. Now? <laughs> For now. Once we get your challenge done, which I don't even know how to figure out how to do. I don't even know how to start. I haven't you had know, time to do much thinking of myself, you know? It sounds familiar, too. That's the thing. I've heard this stuff before, but I can't place it. It's been itching in the back, back of my brain, too. With all the traveling and learning different stories. But, I don't know. I'll figure something out. And then the following day is just a, a straight ride. Um, eventually, probably bef before noon, 
I'd say around like 10 or 11 in the morning, uh, the wagon comes across the uh, Dakota River and the railroad, and from there it's basically a straight shot to the reservation. And as, as you pass by uh, the springs that aren't too far away from the reserv from the reservation. Uh, that's when a uh, red cloud and melting snow will uh, break off from the wagon, shift into their lupus forms, and howl to announce themselves. And you guys are welcomed back into the sept. Well, they, they take the roads. Of course, they're not going to take kinfolk to the cairn or anything, but they're going to go towards where the main group of people live and return their children. Uh, all in the ends well. <clears throat> and, as, and as the kinfolk are unloaded, it's a a very tearful reunion as as um, they're reunited with their families and and uh, ah, brain fart um, but yeah it's a tearful reunion as the the kinfolk are reunited with their families and And the the leader of the the kinfolk, the their chieftain, uh, walks up to you. He's this elderly old man, and he he gives a a nod of respect, and he says, "Thank you." Adrian nods back respectfully and says, "We're allies. I know that." what my people have done has not been right but you and I are allies you don't need to thank me I saw something was wrong and I did what I had to do to make it right now he'd say we not I mm -hmm. we did what we had to do to make it right and he answers back still we all of us thought we would never see our children again. Well, I'm glad personally that that wasn't that that wasn't the case. As am I, but I I will I will leave you be so you can rest and celebrate. And here we figured we'd leave you be <laughs> so you could celebrate yeah. and see your family. Well, just just know if there's anything we can do, even if we are only human compared to the Garu, just let us know and we'll do everything we can. I will, and I appreciate that. Don't think of yourself as just human. Kim folk are some of the most important things we have. And he'll smile at that before he, you know, excuses himself and leaves to rejoin the others. And uh, there's, yeah, there's definitely a, a celebration as the. Uh, Garu of the Sept, uh, as word passes quickly to the other Garu of the Sept, and everyone starts uh, drawing together uh, to have like a, a celebratory party. Adrian runs off to a fire in a corner somewhere and starts trying to make his tea. That cough is getting worse. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah, don't die soon. 
don't feel like leading this pack just yet. You guys don't need me to be a pack. You can always no. find another leader. One they that can requires breathe. Work. That requires too much work. Besides, you fund everything I need, so it works out for me. Uh, I find what you need, you find what I need. Now we're going to see if all of us can find what Al needs. Yeah. Once we get your challenge done with. A bunch I've of already work. used up most of the month. I don't feel guilty for that. But the trip yeah, was as don't. long as the trip was. <laughs> How the fuck you find a cat's football? Figure it out. I mean, the only thing I can think of is a footprint, but... Man, all those things are tied together somehow. I just can't remember how. Well, what are the, uh... What are the riddles? Oh, jeez. He has gases. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I thought I had this written down somewhere. Um, Give me a second. I, I have it somewhere in my notes. If, uh... If you guys he can't is find to it find, in yours. He's to find a cat's footfall, a mountain's root, a fish's breath, and a bird's spit. Well, see, the problem is that none of that stuff even exists. Birds don't have spit as far as I know. Fish don't breathe. Mountains don't really have a root. But I don't think, well, cat's footfall can if it's a print, but otherwise. Too bad none of us are get a Fenris. Why is that? Adrian didn't say that. No, oh. said that. Okay, well, like, why, that's the okay, that's is asking why is that? I don't know. Would a Rom would a person that knows Romanian history know um, Viking history? I mean, should I roll on um, that or something? I mean, the the Vikings kind of traveled everywhere. Um, uh, we we could. Well, that and Adrian went to school and lived his life reading nothing but books. Yeah. What what would that role be? I mean, uh, if 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 Adrian was to sit down and think about it while drinking his tea and getting high from the opium he puts in it, <laughs> um, I um I'd say if if um, I'd say in this case, if you want to rely on your book learning, it would be like intelligence academics. Uh, but if you want to think about like maybe maybe past stories that uh that adrian has heard from other garu i'd say probably like intelligence uh i'd say like enigmas since it is a riddle i'm gonna give it a roll just to see and you can tell me you can either tell me what the diff is or just tell me how it went i'm i'm good either way that's a lot of dice I'm curious what you're gonna get. That was loud. Alright, uh, so three, yeah, three successes. Um, were you doing academics or enigmas? That's enigmas. Enigmas, okay. Uh, so yeah, so Adrian, as you're sitting, drinking your, uh, your tea and getting high, uh, you recall, I'd say probably in your past travels or previous, you know, attended moots where Geta Fenris galliards were present, uh, you recall that, uh, the Geta Fenris just really hate Odin, and you recall a few stories about, uh, what the chains that bind Fenrir in the old viking norse stories are made of and it's uh and you remember that isaac's riddle is is made of is uh made up of most of those ingredients of uh the chains that are supposed to bind fenrir until ragnarok but of course all of all of us being guru would want fenrir free Except it means the end of the world. Okay. I, I would have to... I would have to read the Geta Fenris tribe book to try to remember all the details, but I I know that the Get of Fenris hate Odin, and they're like... They... Yeah, they, they just hate Odin. 
Yeah. But that's because in 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 the end, Odin is going to kill Fenris. That is what they say Ragnarok is. It starts oh, right. when it starts when either Fenris kills Odin or Odin kills Fenris. But oh, okay, now I remember. <laughs> yeah. But of course, Odin was the one that had Fenris chained. So yeah, he's drinking his tea, and after a while, he just looks over at Isaac and he goes, "That elder, did, the one that we took the challenge from, she's a, she's a get a Fenris, right?" I think she was. Isaac would remember, but I don't remember. Yeah, I think she was. He looks out over the all the people in the distance partying and being happy and shit, and he takes another drink of his tea, and he says, that's where I heard that shit from. There was this, there was this get of Fenris galliard that was a furrier. This motherfucker would just swing a hammer all day long. But I swear, he'll make a he'll make a shoe for your horse. To, just perfect, perfect. The guy's great. But he sits there and he talks all day long, and he says, he told me all that, most of that shit there that 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 you're supposed to find was taken out of the world, and it was turned into chains. I think some god, maybe like Thor or something, no, Odin, had them turned into chains that are keeping Fenris locked away underground. So, I'm collecting chain components? I think she wants you to start the end of the world, because if you get that stuff, then you have the chains that tie up Fenris. But then or, Fenris and Odin are going to fight, and it's going to start the end of the world. Everybody's going to freeze to death. Or she just wants me to collect some random things and try to bullshit my way through how <laughs> these things are part of... I am a ragabash, Adrian. You're thinking like a philodox. <laughs> so then what you should do is you should find this, this wolf. No, Maybe one of the red I, talons, and I then you can it. chain it up, and then you can say... And then you don't you don't feed it for like three weeks, and then you can tell her it's over there, tied to that wolf's neck. You can go ahead and get it off if you want it. No, no, I, I have an idea. I'm I'm almost certain she has wanted me to find random things and bullshit my way through it. Like I am I am a very high number certain of this. Okay, okay. You, you know how you know how the up. you know how to use the gift of persuasion, right? I'm a ragged bash. Of course I do. Fortune is what he does best. Exactly. Hey, see, he has it. He, he's learning. Your bullshit cannot compare to my bullshit. Well, there's two different kinds of bullshit. I walked into a place and had them give me the grand tour, and then came back an hour later and killed everybody. I don't know how it worked, but it worked. That's all that matters. That it worked. I should have been a ragabash. No, that would have been horrible. I'm glad you're a ragabash, not me. Yeah, I, I'll think about it. I think I have an idea. Well, if you want to wait to go back until you have your idea, I'll wait with you. I was told to return. I was told to return the kids before one month was over and make sure nobody died. That has been done. It didn't mean I had to go back right away. I just won't get my rank until they give it to me that's all actually uh you guys had a time limit of two months two months yep how how long has it been like um a month about a month yeah we just have to get onto that one thing that the owl wants us to do let's let's work on that that involves have... us going into the deep umbra we're in the lands of the dead in case you've forgotten are you prepared to do that with us? He just kind of looks at him a minute and then motions over himself as if to say, Silent Shider, hello. Okay. Going is, there is part, is part of, you know, part and partial of who I am. Going there 
is part and partial of who you are, guiding me, Laz, and Heath through there and getting us out. That's the hard part. Well, I'm down for a challenge. How about you? Let's do it then. Later. Say, I'm your Huckleberry. No, I'm your Huckleberry. No. Unless Heath and Laz have a problem with going to the place where people go when they die. No, not really. We were planning to go visit that thing to get the 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 um moonstone. That's what. It, no. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. It's the moonstone. Yeah. When we were gonna get the moonstone, we were like, "Hey, maybe we can get it from the land of the dead." But then I said, "Hey, maybe we can get it from the moon, because that's where it comes from anyway." Now we can go get it, go into the underworld and do that then. We ran to the moon. And now we're going down below. I think. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's Next necessarily point. below. It's all around. All right. Well, we're going on the opposite direction of the living, so I'm down for it. Just make sure you got things squared away before we do. Don't worry. I have my will ready. Do we go back home beforehand, or should we just leave from here? Whatever you guys are ready to do. Let's rest for today. I'm pretty sure that they're going to make food here and feed it to us, so that's going to be nice. You know, a nice home-cooked meal. Tired eating trail mix. Then I will ask... Then I'll ask the elders here to tell them that Owl sent us out, that one of our things has been accomplished, but Owl has sent us out to do something. We'll be back in a month. Hopefully by then we will have figured out what to present. What to present for your challenge. All right, and as the four of you rest for the day, um, the celebration amongst the kinfolk uh, turns into kind of a, a improvised moot as um, the other Garu of the Sept start to gather together and th uh, Melting Snow and the Ice Stalker pack starts to basically spread the word and tell everybody like what they've been up to for the past month. Um, that's around like January 2nd uh, when you guys arrive to the reservation and then tomorrow it's gonna, it's gonna be the third <sighs> i think once this is all over and we finish up uh isaac's uh, <clears throat> isaac's uh challenge i wow. think i can start my own challenge for rank sorry maybe we'll see what the end of this uh wild wild adventure to find the uh what the owl wants to get me you just gotta live through it yeah is it snow in the place where people are dead is it cold like it is here or is it warmer yeah. can we go to hell where it's a little bit warmer and a little bit more humid oh it's is that about heaven or hell or any of those silly concepts you might hear in a church or a daddy's gonna beat me for this one from pastors it's it's almost like feeling nothing. Go into a lukewarm water or go into a room a uh, room that's perfect perfect temperature. But you don't really feel it. It's like everything is muted. Like you're under several blankets and you can grab somebody's arm and they won't really register it because you can't really feel it. Something like that. Imagine oh, unpleasant. Yeah, imagine imagine that not only as a tangible sensation. As in, you know, everything's muted. Your, your sense of smell feels like it's you have something shut up your nose. Your hearing, you just can't can't seem to function if you stay in there too long. Ugh. It's almost like being dead. It's not a pleasant sensation. Something that we've grown used to as we've you know been in and out. But it's uh it's manageable if you try to ignore it as much as possible. I just wouldn't recommend staying in there for longer than you have to, because when you stay in there, you start to get soiled by the Dark Umbra. You start having wraiths kind of want to turn their attention to you, especially when you have, you know, a bright, shining beacon that I am. They well, love my tribe. Well, if a wraith does come up to us, can we kill it? I wouldn't suggest it. I mean, if it's attacking you, sure. So but it is just possible. Well, it's possible, yeah. Anything can attack you. Be it deep umber, dark umber, your wrist, whatever you want to call it. Anything is going to attack you, but... If if one is coming up to you, giving you, you know, the hairy eye or staring you down, just ignore it. Oh, well, if it's says, giving right, me a hairy eye, see you. Well, if he's giving me a hairy eye, I don't care. If he's giving me a bloody claw, then I've got a problem. 
Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, if you're going to get attacked, you have to attack in return. I just wouldn't probably make the first swing because uh, when you make a wraith angry, you pretty much make all the wraiths angry. Ah. Do you know they have their own little tribes? Do they? Yeah, they have their own, I don't know what they call them, clans, tribes, quarteries, whatever you call them. Yeah, they're all different. Huh. Just like us and vampires. Yep. Ah. Gotta have some structure even amongst the dead, I suppose. No. Well, they're all just envious of us and therefore copy us at every turn. Some of them. I mean, some prefer to be dead, and they do step over the, the line or the veil, as it were, to bring people along for the fun. Any of them as wraithy red talons. Out of the frying pan and into the oven. Uh, well, out of the frying pan and into the washing machine. Or, wait, that haven't been invented yet. Into the washing basin. There you go. Something like that. I'm 100 years too early for that. Too late for that. <sighs> well, I'm excited. You mean a washing machine like a dishwasher, right? Yeah, I know those things in this time period. Uh, well, I have dishwashers. That's true. Adrian's is named Isadora. Just don't tell her that. Right. I have one question, though. Does the Underworld have a ruler? Like a person in charge of all this? Like God? Not like God. Satan? I'm thinking more like a king or leader. Mm, not um, quite. Would it be a ferryman? <laughs> I mean, you aren't too wrong. Huh? What do the Greeks call him? Romans? Aron or something like that? <laughs> yeah, something like that. A ferryman. <sighs> well, Sunshine, whenever you're ready, we can, we can uh, go into... Into the deep. I'll talk to the... That deep, but we'll see. You don't have to worry about this fairy man you keep laughing about. There's nothing else to do but laugh about him. If we meet him, I'm pretty sure we'd all be dead, so... <laughs> may what? as well laugh. <laughs> yeah, uh, Adrian's gonna just... He's gonna finish his tea and go talk to the elders, see if they'd be willing to send word back to their own set that basically, uh... uh progress report they've made it back from oklahoma the kids are safe nobody's been injured nobody's died and gonna go out and do something for owl while isaac works on his challenge and they'll be back in hopefully a month all right and the the elders are perfectly fine with uh sending the message uh to saint denis and uh, they they wish um, you know, uh, White Eagle uh, wishes you luck on your spirit quest. When he says that, Adrian gives a look and says, huh, I guess it is a spirit quest. It's a quest from a spirit. I hadn't thought about it that way yet. There's someone here. Adrian, there's someone here. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and he just walks. <laughs> All right, then. All right, so um, so Isaac, I'd say you, you know it. Um, it takes a uh, if if I'm remembering the details of the right correctly, it you basically have to make a sacrifice in order to open the way into uh, the dark umbra, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, he it, it's going to take him about five minutes to do the ritual. He has to uh, sacrifice a living creature and everybody that's going to be infected to be brought into the underworld has to be marked with a fingerprint of blood somewhere. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. I just wanted to double check and see if it's like you have to do the right, like twice to go in and then out, or if it's just a one time thing. Um, I honestly don't know. I just know it just says to to get in. I think to get out is just like slipping sideways. Oh, okay. I I could be wrong. Oh, um, yeah. I think you really it's up to storyteller discretion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I okay. Oh, I'm just trying to remember her from like months ago of the other werewolf game. I I think what that I think what that other game did was it's like the the right to go in and then the right to go out again, which I was kind of leaning towards doing if if that works. 
could be possible. If, if you say possible. that's how the world <laughs> works, then that's how the world works. All right. <laughs> the way I always played it. All right. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Since it was a, a it's basically a, a shortcut. Um, but I I just wanted to double check and make sure I wasn't like missing anything. Um, is this legal? Laz, are you asking about sacrificing oh. the, the animals, or...? <laughs> you know, I don't know if America has laws against sacrificing animals at this point. No, I don't think so, as long as it isn't somebody else's cattle and stuff. But yeah, I will say, uh, Isaac, you find, like, two rabbits or two squirrels or something tie yeah, them up specifically yeah. big rodents okay so yeah we'll say like two rabbits and yeah. you tie them up and the yeah the following morning um yeah isaac uh in order to do the right you also remember that you have to find a place connected uh, to death. So it'd be like a graveyard or the site of a battle. Um, we'll say that the uh, the Ectena are willing to let you do the right in like um, their burial grounds. So the, the four of you gather and you perform the right. Sacrifice the rabbit and then fingerprint of blood on everybody. Right. I don't know if you want to like role play it out and describe it or just kind of go through the motions. Uh, well, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, he would oh, yeah. he would uh, have uh, two of the rabbits. One of them he would he would try to cage it or something so he won't be hanging there from his belt, you know, be mm -hmm. a little bit humane before slaughtering it later but um he would go to each of them and you know take a thumbprint of blood and put a thumb on their forehead uh to kind of like where the third eye is and uh with the rest of the blood he'll go around doing symbols you know he's quiet the entire time probably the most serious and quiet people see him in a while and uh just to make sure that the right is done properly before extending his will to perform it. But you have to find the right the role for it. Give me a second. Sorry. Intelligence and occult. Okay. Uh, intelligence and occult. And I'll say since the reservations, like, it's not quite the wilderness, but it's not quite, like, weaver heavy either. I'll say, like, mm -hmm. probably, like, a difficulty six. The right. standard diff. Okay, and change that to six. So I got three successes. Why is that purple? Oh, is that crit? One, two, three. So four successes. So that would take uh, one. Yeah, that take him and then four others, mm -hmm. which is what he needed. Isaac performs the right, and the four of you step into the dark umbra it's a a shift from the warm early morning sun and then just a dismal cold as the the lively trees and surroundings around you start to fade to a dead and rotting gray and you see the the reservation in the distance <laughs> as it's it's just a a large group of destroyed of broken down tents and ramshackle shelters uh you and there's maybe just like a few lean to shelters where you see a a few figures watching as you appear in as you appear and they huddle back into these 
improvised shelters just hiding away. And it's just this oppressive, dreary atmosphere as the air itself just feels heavy with with dread and the, the entire landscape just looks dead all around 